HTC Vive Flow, the lightest virtual reality headset in the market so far. To me I think they look incredibly nice, they have a good design. What do you think? Are they worth surprising your fiancé with them? Let me know in the comment section. They are said to be the most comfortable VR, and the lightest with 189 grams, probably lighter than most mobile phones, like iPhone 13 which weighs about 220 grams. Viveflow uses an Android phone to control it, and has four different sections, bottom to select, top for menu, and sides for left and right. It's so easy to control apart from a few mistakes due to tapping the wrong area. While it connects wirelessly with the phone to power apps and experiences using USB Type-C or over a local network. Unlike other VR headsets like the Oculus Quest, Viveflow is connected with its battery through a USB Type-C cable to its external battery hence it's lightweight. It has an internal battery, but a small one, just to prevent the VR from shutting off in case you unplug it accidentally. It supports phone to VR streaming Miracast which helps you to wirelessly show and control your phone screen in VR. This can be nice, if you don't have one, or you're not near a TV, you can stream your best Netflix or Disney show anywhere and feel like you're in a movie theater. It has nice audio quality with its tiny inbuilt speakers and Bluetooth is well supported. It has displays of up to 75 frames per second, and you can adjust the eye lenses according to your best fit. And by the way, if you're enjoying this content, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more of this. Stay tuned until the end, and I'll show you an incredible design of iPhone 14 Pro Max that amazes me. I can't wait for next year to get hold of one. I think the best thing about Vive Flow is its portability. It's like having a MacBook and an iPad, and you want to go out expecting to edit some videos on the way or do some work. What would you take with you? You probably will take the iPad since it will do all that a MacBook can do, and on the better side, it's more portable. Let's say you're traveling, at the same time you can be in a relaxation mode like meditation and stuff, you can be watching your favorite show with this giant screen that tracks your movement, you can be playing some games, and it brings to you the best experience. HTC is really crushing it in the VR sector and they are focusing on hand tracking, so that you can be controlling them with your hands. The Vivo has also a big challenge since it only supports Android phones, but they are looking forward to bring it to iPhones. It has a price range of $499, a little $100 more than the Oculus Quest 2, but with the greater advantage of its portability. It runs on a battery bank. If you have 10,000 mAh of power bank, it can last you for 5 hours, and though it's not recommended, if you're in the middle of a nice movie, and your power bank is out of charge, you can plug it into your phone, and your phone will power it. Let's talk about iPhone 14 Pro Max, I can't wait for this phone. This is the expected iPhone 14 Pro Max, with the features from 4, 12 megapixels camera, 6 gigabytes of RAM, 5 nanometers Apple A15 Bionic chip, 3687 milliamperes of battery, and without any ports, everything is now wireless from a MagSafe charger to Bluetooth AirPods, 6.7-inch display, 512 gigabytes of storage, and here is where the juicy part is, iPhone 14 Pro Max will be a dual SIM and a fingerprint on this screen. Many more updates to be coming soon. Stay tuned to receive fun and amazing facts at the end. Elon Musk has done it again, this is crazy. Last week, Tesla held what Bloomberg described as an Oktoberfest county fair just south of Berlin, Germany, at the site of the Gigafactory, which is still under construction. Tesla introduced Gigabeer, a Cybertruck-inspired beer you can buy from Tesla. It is inspired by graffiti, and I think he's a fan of graffiti. He says and I quote, we're gonna build a train station that's right on the property, and then we're gonna have graffiti murals all throughout the factory, on the outside and everything. So I think that's gonna be pretty cool. We've got some already. And, we're gonna have a beer. This wasn't expected, the brew's design aesthetic has been borrowed from Tesla's own Cybertruck. You would think you're having a drink from space somewhere in the future, or in a Halo game about to attack. By the way, Elon is a great fan of Halo, I think he gets some of his insane ideas from there. 
The Gigabeer is a dream come true after last year on April's Fool's Day he launched the Tesla $250 tequila as a joke, and it sold out immediately until it was out of stock on their website. Now he's becoming serious about it. He said that Gigabeer will be served at Tesla's German factory. If I were to choose between the bottle and the beer, I think I would choose the bottle, what would you choose? Comment down below. That bottle itself makes you feel like you're in the 22nd century somewhere on Mars. It's time for a fact, thanks for watching this video until the end, but before you go, do you love the earthy smell when the first train after a long period of warm, dry weather hits the ground? And you feel like you could eat it? It's called petriture. It is caused by the water from the rain, along with certain compounds like ozone, geosmin, and plant oils. During dry weather, plants produce compounds that accumulate in between rocks and in soil. When it rains, these compounds are released into the air to add to the earthy smell. Make sure you subscribe, and I'll be keeping you in the latest tech updates. Tuning in on Apple events next week and I'll give you a good summary of the long video. Stay tuned, bye.